I want to go through. I, I think it's worth it to go through this because this is really incredible. And as much as I wanted to believe that we could leave this all behind and not worry about this anymore, they just can't. They just it's gonna be can't. like twenty. It's gonna be like twenty years from now, and there's still gonna be stories coming out about how the Kremlin backed Trump. Okay, so here's what the headline says, and this isn't <laughs> gonna be news. It probably won't be as big a news when you finally get to see it, but this is this is. I'm gonna give you the way that I'm taking this all in, Rania, and then you can you can tell me what you think. But first, I want to make sure you know what is being said in this story, uh, because remember, everyone, she's she's got the whole country of Lebanon falling apart and uh, yeah. doesn't doesn't have electricity. So, so just want to make sure that we're clear on what we're talking about in this story. So allegedly, allegedly. These papers talk about a meeting from the 22nd of January in 2016. And they basically had this meeting. There was Vladimir Putin was there. The spy chiefs were there. There were senior ministers. And we're to believe that this document says that they agreed that a Trump White House would help Moscow uh -huh. And among them, social turmoil in the U.S. would help Russia, oh. and it would weaken America's negotiating position. Which, by the way, I'm not going to be able to not edit. I think as we go through this, we're probably going to editorialize along the way, because my immediate reaction to that, and you see, tell me if you agree, Rania, is that, that every country just does that. In fact, the United States does that. We right. are monitoring elections and people yes, are privately we, having conversations not about just monitoring. Yeah. We're not just well, monitoring. Yeah. We're like in their countries, in their in embassies, like plotting to make sure it goes our way in like every country around the world. And that's not an over and that's that's like not an exaggeration. <laughs> that's actually so, what America does. So the most innocent, the most innocent and non-harmful meeting would be u.s officials just talking about what yeah. the future would mean for the which u.s they definitely do yeah which which, they which, we're, which they're doing all the time so why and this like is you supposed said every to, country and every yeah, country every, that, yeah. every country is like what will this mean for us if this person wins so right. that's okay so so far i'm not considering that that meeting is anything bad by this point trump's the front runner and it says the report prepared by Putin's expert department recommended Moscow use all possible force to ensure a Trump victory. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I have no idea what all possible forces. Do you have any thoughts like, on so like air like airstrikes? <laughs> on like voting airstrikes on like voting on voting uh, locations or poll locations that vote Democrat? Like what would I don't know what that would mean? <laughs> I don't know what they can do. Um, even cyber intrusions aren't yeah, going to take sure down yeah. US democracy. Yeah. But they're yeah, not going to because people like we have, and it's been shown since the September 11th attacks, the biggest behemoth in security of, of any security agency uh, with like hundreds, if not thousands of cybersecurity contractors working in dozens of intelligence agencies. Right. They're not yeah. going to disrupt our election. There's so also, anyways. I mean, but also I'll just give you my raw reactions from what you've told me so far. Like the first thing that popped <laughs> in my head is in January of 2016, the Clinton campaign was oh, meeting yes. to say they wanted Trump to be the front runner. That's the irony of this is like they actually oh, plotted oh. to try to help him win. Oh, it gets better because that's actually to some degree it features in this story. So it says here that the papers seen by the Guardian seem to represent a serious and highly unusual leak from within the Kremlin. I'll come back to that. The Guardian has shown the documents to independent experts who say they appear to be genuine. Right, to who, Bellingcat? Incident, yeah, okay, here's the thing. Who, who is this? Who the fuck is leaking this? And this is, this is my question. Uh, this is out on Twitter. People can find this in um, with with less words. But who the fuck or what the fuck is leaking this document on a meeting in 2016 in 2021, the middle of the year, well after Donald Trump is no longer president, and 
claiming that, okay, as we continue on here, there's details in here about an appendix that hmm. appears in the, yeah, it's here. It says the paper refers to, um, there's a brief psychological assessment of Trump who is described as an impulsive, mentally unstable and unbalanced individual who suffers from an inferiority complex. Okay. By the way, that was what MSNBC was saying every single day. So like, you don't yeah, need like, nothing new. you don't need particular insights. Anyways, it promised, uh, the report ha says, uh, that, uh, there's confirmation that the Kremlin possesses compromise. It's one of their most favorite words to throw around yeah. in the Russian language. They say that it has potentially compromising material on the future president that was collected from his non-official visits to Russian Federation territory. The paper refers to certain events that happened during Trump's trips to Moscow. Security Council members are invited to find details in Appendix 5 at Paragraph paragraph five, but it's unclear what the appendix contains. Okay. First off, I'm going to put this document up here so everyone can see how ridiculous it looks. But then the thing is that like, where's the appendix? Who leaks this document without the actual appendix that has the compromise? Like, that's a good point. Like, like that's like, like the most juiciest like, part. Like, like, what is this? Who, who, like, again, I, I, I know that like what I'm doing is the thing that you're not supposed to do if you believe that like this is blowing the whistle on something. You're not supposed to like attack the messenger. But I can't help but ask, based on how we're getting the story presented, who is the person who leaked this? Where did like or or where is it coming from? And also, where's the independent the the appendix? And and all, and then finally, who is authenticating this fucking document? Like, who are you showing? Like in this story. You should tell us who is authenticating this document. Who did you show? I don't think it's good enough to just vaguely tell us who these people are that you showed the documents. Like they just, like Rania, they just, I read the part, the, the section to you where they just say that like they showed it to independent experts who say they appear to be genuine. Who are these people? I mean, if they're I independent, don't they don't, if they're independent, I they don't work for a government agency. So they, they can't be jeopardized if you tell us who they are. If they work for Bellingcat, then that's part of their job. That's what they do. They're supposed to like do this out in the open. Why is this so right. secret? Yeah, I think it's Bellingcat. It's got to be Bellingcat. It's got to like who else would the fuck would be behind this? It's got to be Bellingcat. And so then finally to make us all even more happy is this part of the story where it says uh, that uh, it says Trump is the most pr promising candidate from the Kremlin's point of view. The word in Russian is perspectivny. And mm -hmm. as you we were saying, as you were saying, Hillary Clinton had some perspectivny. Yeah. And her perspectivny <laughs> was that Donald Trump would be an easier candidate for her to run against than exactly. any other Republican candidate. 